Hey guys, Allison here, and uh, I'm bringing day 11 of Load 219 to you. The prompt today is to scrapbook something clever, I believe it said. Let me read it to you. Scrap a story about cleverness or intelligence, um, or use, and then the, the technique prompt is to use something rustic. Um, so, I am going to scrapbook these two photos. And these are the photos of the potions class set at the Warner Brothers Harry Potter studio tour. I figure it's a classroom that's about intelligence, right? I might be stretching it a tiny bit, but hey, that's all part of the fun of load is being able to sort of take you the prompt and make it your own. Okay, so things I have pulled already. I like the blue tones that are happening in this photo, so I want to accent them. And I've pulled a number of blue 12 by 12 background papers. Um, there wasn't any in the sort of kit of supplies I put together that was going to work. So I just went to my um, stash. I organized my paper by color. So I just grabbed the blue stack and went through it and just pulled out a few. I didn't go through the whole stack. I just kind of stopped once I'd reached however many I've got here. Okay. I kind of like this marbly effect, but it is more green than blue, so I'm not sure if it's going to work. And I forgot to look at what's on the back, but that might work. I might be able to map my photos. I do need something light behind these photos because they are so dark. Um, a light frame will help them stand out. Um, oh, this one is from Maggie Holmes Chasing Dreams, so it's a few a couple years old. This one is from Amy Tangerine on a on a whim. Um, I like the lighter tones in blue. In fact, I could match the photos on this. And then this is from Chamel's box of crayons. I promise. And I, I just, I really like that, that depth, I guess I'd call it. And then there's this one, which is a kind of brighter blue my mind's eye it says well hello those birds on the other side i will never use those birds because i'm not a big bird fan but i do like how that color works it really works with the photos other things i have pulled some paper scraps um rustic wood it's wood grain it's also distressed so that could work um it, potions class is held in a dungeon this, these are scraps from my bin of scraps um, from this project. So I had used this when I was scrapbooking photos in the dark forest of Aragog and his family. But potions glass is held in the dungeon, so I could use this somehow. More rustic elements, a bit of a brick pattern, and a wood grain. Other things I have, I've got my two stamp sets. Um, I pulled out Chanel's box of crayons journaling pad. I'm pretty sure there's a ledger print in here somewhere because she loves ledgers, so uh, that could come in handy. I've also got her Glitter Girl 6x6 paper pad. I've been using a lot of the Glitter Girl papers in this project, so I thought I would have that to hand. Um, some letter stickers. This can also be my rustic element. These are kind of, well, they're kind of like a wood grain. Yeah, they are. They're wood grain, but they've got a gold sort of frame around them. And I've also got from Box of Crayons her glittery word stickers. I'm not sure if I'm going to use them, but they're navy. So yay to navy. And maybe I can put some things in there. I have also got this one. This is from Little by Little. But there are some words that I could maybe cut um, and use. And then this one, I liked this tag. Be smart, be charming, be kind, be silly, be you. So I know it's just the whole sheet for one tag, but it's a start. It's also got that same pattern. So that might be a way of bringing in that pattern, but not using the whole sheet. We'll see. Like I said, I always pull way more than I'm going to need. Okay, I'm going to put these things to one side and I'm going 
got to figure out my base layers first. Oops, where did my photos go? Figure out how these photos are going to go. I kind of like the idea of stacking them in a block. That makes them nice and easy to work with. I think having them side by side is a little awkward. So I have the one that has the Snape figurine at the top and it sort of shows sort of one side of the classroom and then this shows the other side, I guess. Okay, well, what are we going to mount these on? I had the thought as I was flipping through this that I could maybe, if there's enough space, of course spider webs are not exactly right side up, I could use that to mount it. That would be fun. Let's just commit to that because it's all about committing and sticking and moving on. And you're probably not going to be able to tell afterwards that these are spider webs. And um, I'll say this, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm totally okay with that. I know they're spider webs. The biggest thing that this, this particular paper is giving me is just a little bit of differentiation between the photos and the papers. All right, so papers. I quite like this. Hmm, how can I pull in some of these others? What do you think? Lighten it up a bit and have that light color. are going back in my blue section. So this is going to be um, a mat and then I will use this as a full sheet. grid lines on that make it super easy to line everything up properly. Let's cut the branding strip off this one. So we're going to keep it at our at the 12 by 12 size. We need to get rid of that strip along the bottom. Oof, cut that very straight. decisions. thought was, oops, chose the wrong side. 
have this at like almost halfway. I could even. Yeah, I think that's too much. Okay. Quite like that. Let's get that stuck down. together nicely. Okay. Now I'm positioning this side of the photo mat so that I am top and bottom on a dark blue stripe. So you get that additional contrast between the light blue mat and the dark blue stripe. Now I've also pulled a few stickers just from some sheets that I had. And I get you can hear my children stomping around upstairs as they get ready for bed. I apologize for that. I noticed it on another previous video. It's like, oh, it's like there's elephants above me. Not quite elephants. Tiny little girls that are very loud. <laughs> wow, that is not straight. I swear I did not have wine with dinner, but you never know it. Okay. I might need to ink some of these just to dirty them up a little bit. word magic. Let's see what else there is. I don't think we can go with sweet. <laughs> this is potions class after all. I think we could do magic. Considering how crookedly I'm cutting things today, maybe I should just go to my trimmer. journaling book can we use. Let's see, we've got some ledger. Pull that out. Hmm. There's also a cream ledger.
a lot of the like the spiderweb paper um, is on a cream background and this is kind of that aged look but then I've got spots of white so that's why I'm kind of flipping past a lot of these ones that have a cream background even though they're fantastic and then these ones almost feel too white does that make sense but this one it's very large if I pulled it out earlier I could have probably made it fit but it is almost as it is basically the same size as my photos so you know what that's too big okay I think we can cut this one down and then layer on top of that um, okay let's just take a quick peek through the glitter girl let's see if there's anything I like those two. Ooh. I have used that in other places, both in the small size and in the 12 by 12, I believe. And I do like to reuse um, motifs throughout my album. I think that's all I need from there. And I'm probably repeating myself, but that just helps things stay consistent and cohesive. I mean, not consistent, cohesive. Sorry, I'm rambling. Children interrupting me, getting off, off topic. Okay. Now, this one that I'm cutting out here that has a speech bubble on it. I will honestly probably not use as a speech bubble, just as a layering piece. All right, so I need to cut this down. Ooh, you know what would be fun? As if it was, as if it was torn out of a notebook. I have a notebook punch, I've got the edge punch. Hang on. Just not sure if I want it that long. I don't think I do. All right, let's cut it down to say. inches and then we'll give it this edge and then we can rip a, th a few of them as if, as if it's been torn out of um, like a school book or something a spiral bound dare I say potions book Do anything quietly. She must jump and twirl. And <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. they're all sticker sheets that I've had for a long time so if I end up covering it all up I honestly am not worried about it they've been in my stash for far too long and they need to get out
come over here. That brings my white over there. Or do I leave it? Okay, I'm gonna think about that one. Uh, what else do we have? I have this clipboard, which I thought was very bookish, schoolish. that I could say something like learning magic My letter stickers go. oh I mean I have two packages of these but you never know I might have used up all my ease oh I have Look at that. Oh no, I have one. Okay. No. Not learning magic. Let's call it practical. Oh, that's right. These are chipboards, so they're going to need some extra adhesive. It's heaven knows. Can't make chipboard letters that stick to anything. Alright, do I have all the right letters? There's a T. Already down an R. Okay. Shoot, do I not have an R in this one? annoying. Nothing like getting a good title and then not being able to use it because you don't have the right letters. What about denim? Okay, give me a minute to put these away. All right, these are also chipboard, so they won't stick. <laughs> but that's okay, it allows us to take our time placing them. Since I know that I'm going to have to move these around and uh, use my wet glue anyways, it gave me time to figure out spacing and also um, yeah, I, think I can layer them on top of the word magic. Trying to decide if I want them 
neatly in a line or slightly messy. I feel like the subject matter could be it could be messy. Even though Snape as a professor was very exacting, I don't know, I feel like being in a dark dungeon, surrounded by eye of newt and cobwebs and all the rest of it. It's kind of messy. Alright, we'll settle for a happy medium of both. How about? Okay. Have to bring some sort of scholarly motifs around. Well done. This might need to be on pop dots like the clipboard if I can pull it off now. Okay, let's get this one stuck down. Let's commit. Oh, and I should get my journaling in. Not really sure I need this anymore. Though I do like how just having that little bit of lightness behind this dark blue um, block makes you take note of that a bit more. So maybe I will. Just need to find a way to tuck it back there neatly. Layers and layers and layers. Some of these were just really for the, the color more than anything. Sometimes hmm. I realize I'm hiding most of that, but I don't like that. Uh, sometimes you just kind of have to 
um, you realize you can't have it all, but actually, I kind of like that layered because the, the the words in the in the middle of that sticker behind were not really what I wanted. But it's more it was more for the color. And again, I don't know. Hmm. It does kind of fit neatly there, though, doesn't it? Okay. Um, and now I did bring out my stamp set, and I haven't used it yet. So let's see. Oh, I pretty much covered everything up. Let's see if I can use any of this. And I haven't used this anywhere, but... I think I'm okay with that. I feel like I have enough layers. Okay. Um, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Nope. That's a hybrid thing. Why must it always be you three? That's a McGonagall thing. Sort of exciting, isn't it? Breaking the rules. Hmm. Don't let the models get you down. You know what? I'm gonna add a little bit of that. Changing my mind about this one, I think I'm just gonna tuck it under. So I have the color and the, the shape. I'm trying to be careful not to touch my writing on this on this sticker because I don't know if it's dry yet. I don't want to smudge. That's smudged. I could feel it moving. Okay. If you make a little mistake when stamping, if you just kind of stamp it a bunch of times, people don't know. Shh. Okay, so now it's time for some different textures. Let's start with these. Let's start with the stars, I think. things that I think I can work with. Uh, I have this packet from Simple Stories DIY of like burlap shapes. Um, since I've started with some stars, I'm going to try and work with that. I've also got some cork stars. I think I need to glue those on. I've got some enamel dot stars in a, a pale uh, bluey gray. I've also got dots to match. These are for my Stampin' Up! days. I'll get this open. They're like little clipboard clips. Since I have an actual clipboard here, that looks a little cheesy, but I might be able to put them somewhere. And then just some um, enamel dots in sort of that tealy blue cup. So let's start with the biggest. Let's start with this. gonna start moving things. Yeah, maybe. 
but he'll have these not uh, not on the layers. Have it up there. They are all kind of in proximity though. Okay, we'll leave that one down there. All right, next we've got some cork stars. They're gonna require some glue. They'll use the teeny tiny ones to sort of sprinkle them around a little bit. Oh, I'll see if I want any more because I've got lots more stars I can use. you're wondering these ones are just from Michaels quite inexpensive Now I've got six things in each grouping, so I need I need a seventh because it's got to be odd numbers for me. You know what? I think that's that's too much. Okay, that's where I'm going to call this one done. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you again next time for load two one nine day twelve. Bye.